the Jeep Wrangler JL fuse box. If somebody paid you a million dollars to change a fuse, would you refuse? <sighs> Just go okay, away. Okay, well how about, why did the fuse pop? It couldn't <sighs> resist. Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host, glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're gonna learn a little bit about the Jeep Wrangler JL Fuse Box, also called the Power Distribution Center. So stick around. It's good that you're teaching about that. It'll help them keep current. It's interesting how I first came across the idea of doing a video on the fuse box. It happened a couple weeks back when I was on a trail run with my Jeep club and I don't have a dedicated CB mounted in my Jeep. So somebody in the club lent me a portable one. And there's a couple of good ones out there and I'll put links in the description section of the video so you can have a look at those. But the nice thing about that was I didn't have to have a dedicated antenna or a, a committed power source because you could simply plug those into the cigarette lighter and just use the attached antenna and for the distances we were talking about between Jeeps on the trail it worked great. Well it kind of did. Initially I had an issue because when I went to plug it in I learned somehow the cigarette lighter 12 volt fuse had popped and I didn't realize that until there I was out on the trail. And so when I was investigating the matter, I learned an interesting thing. And some of the things that I learned is what I'm gonna share with you today. So let's first open up the fuse box and have a look inside. The first thing you'll notice when you take off the lid to the fuse box is there's a whole map of the fuse box on the inside of the lid. Now that is a little hard to read and I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get a good visual in terms of an image for you on the YouTube screen here, but I'll put a link in the description section to this website which maps out all the fuses and identifies what they're for, similar to this map. But also, in your manual, I think it's page 56, it also maps it out in there, so you can also check it out there if you happen to be on the trail and you're finding this difficult to read and you happen to have the manual in your glove box. I don't know if it was my having used the fridge or charging the Jackery, but somehow I blew the fuse for the 12 volt cigarette lighter socket at the front of the Jeep. And I needed it because I wanted to plug in a CB radio and I'm on the trail. So there I was out on the trail looking at this map, identifying which fuse belonged to the cigarette lighter. And what I learned was there's actually three places that are identified as such. One is, of course, the cigarette lighter in the dash, the 12 volt source that's in the glove box, and of course, the one in the rear. So by consulting the map, I was able to determine that fuse number 56 was the fuse for the front dash. And I thought I should check it out to see if it in fact is blown. And interestingly, I learned that the fuse box comes with a fuse puller. And you just remove it as such. And you could squeeze these ends right here to open the end of the fuse puller. And you just put it over the suspect fuse to remove it. And when I did that, I learned, yes, it in fact had popped. And this is what it looks like to see a fuse that is popped that gap that you see wouldn't be there if the fuse hadn't popped, it would be continuous. So I still had the problem of how do I now solve the popped fuse issue. But luckily, as I was reading this map, I could see the word spare, spare, spare on the map. I thought, I think FCA has included spares in the fuse box. So when I looked at where they identified the locations of spares, they are on these elevated tower-like structures. And so when I pulled the 20 amp fuse out of this location and I looked down into the tower, I didn't see any contact. So I thought it was pretty safe to assume that is in fact a spare. So I investigated, the fuse wasn't blown, it was intact. I inserted it into slot number 56 for the front 12 volt source and the CB radio worked. And then of course the fuse puller just seats straight back in to the location where you pulled it out. 
and it's pretty otherwise a pretty nice little system very easy to follow and the map is easy to follow so in looking at where there might be locations for the other spares they seem to be in these towers along the back right here when i remove it i don't see any contacts down there so that's pretty safe to assume those locations are for the spares so after that exciting moment, I decided maybe I should do a video just to explain a little bit about that and some other things about this fuse box. Let's have a look at what some of those other things are. You have fuses that are 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. And then you have these relays, which are a little bit more complicated than fuses, but I wouldn't be, when I'm out on the trail, I wouldn't be messing with those anyway. However, it's good to know about these fuses because it was such an easy thing to fix out on the trail, especially given that there were spares. And when I look at the other tower locations, I seem to have a 25 amp fuse here, a 15 here, a 10 and a five. So those are the micro two fuses, but there are some other kinds of fuses. So let's just do a summary on the different kinds of fuses. A careful scan of the Jeep Wrangler JL fuse box will show you that there are many types, sizes, and colors of fuses, and that is even dependent on how your Jeep is equipped. A brief visit to the fuse box info site, the link to which is in the description section of this video, will allow you to click on a tab that can inform you on the different types of fuses. You can see here the different types of blade fuses, the Jeep Wrangler JL has the Micro 2 type of blade fuses. Then you can see the cartridge fuses and the Jeep Wrangler JL has the M-Case and I believe the M-Case Plus fuses. And then you can see this table shows that the Micro 2 fuses have a certain color code per amps and the cartridge fuses also have their own color code per amps. A visit to some forum links which will also be in the description section has a little bit more extensive discussion of the different types of fuses that you can see here. Here's the Micro 2, and here is a sample of the M-Case fuse and the M-Case Plus fuse, which has the slots in it. Okay, so hopefully now that you have a little more knowledge about the fuse box and the different fuses that you have and the types of fuses you have in your Jeep Wrangler JL, you'll be a little bit more informed next time you have to look in the box to fix a situation. I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that in the forums a lot of people have suggested to help avoid some electronic gremlins that some people have experienced in their Wrangler JLs. The members of the forum suggested that you go and make sure you press each of the fuses down, I'll press the relays as well, and make sure that they're all seated properly. They're all in nice and tight now and they don't click because they've all been seated all the way in. but. I'd recommend that you go ahead and do that as they suggest on the forums. And I'll put a link in the description section of those forum threads where people talked about that. And uh, they suggested that that seemed to resolve some annoying minor electronic gremlins that they were experiencing. And we're all set. And also finally, uh, an interesting tip is how the fuse box goes on. Because you could be confused, it's just a rectangle with two side clips that you squeeze to open it. But if you got confused and you weren't sure if it goes this way or if it goes that way, uh, you'll notice over here on the driver's side of the fuse box or the power distribution center, there are some wires coming in to the power distribution center. And there's a metal bracket that they all bolt onto which have their own fuses in there. And anyway, because those are there, that's where this side of the lid would cover. And so you just make sure it slides over there and it just sits nicely into the groove and these side clips just go down and it just snaps into place. So I hope that you found that helpful. And if you're on the trail and you need to replace a fuse, that the spares that we just learned are included by FCA may help you. And I'm also going to share with you a tip on a little fuse kit that you may want to keep in your glove box to help yourself or maybe somebody else on the trail that might be needing a fuse. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, share it with somebody who you think would benefit from knowing about this. 
And if you're new to the channel, maybe you'd like to subscribe and click the alert bell so you don't miss other informative videos like this one. Okay, let's move on to our tip segment. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. So it's good to know I need to re replenish the spot for the 20 amp spare. But in this week's tip segment, I'm just gonna show you a kit that you can keep in the glove box as well. The links to the following products will also appear in the description section as well. But what you see here is a variety pack of the Micro 2 type fuses. And then here is a variety pack of the M case fuses. And then here is a variety pack of the M case plus fuses. And then should you care to have some extra fuses for possibly other people on the trail who have different types of vehicles, this is an all-inclusive variety pack of different types of fuses that aren't specific to the Wrangler JL. So hopefully you found that helpful. Now let's move on and hear from our subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from a viewer who watched our video from two weeks ago on how to use a manual transmission should you be stuck in a water hole or mud. Hey Jeeper Jeeper TV, something I discovered when I replaced my clutch is to give a few minutes after the mud hole to let the water drain out of the housing unit before you punch the clutch. Takes a few for all the liquid to drain out of it. Signed, Tika's Dragon from Jeep Talk Show, Facebook. Hey Tika, thank you very much for that tip. And if you have any subscriber tips that you'd like to share, please feel free to put them in the comments section below because they may make it in a future episode. Okay, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. Thank you so much for joining us. It's possible by next week's video, we might reach 6,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed just yet, please feel free to join the community and maybe you want to share this video with somebody who would benefit from this information and if you found it helpful how about giving the video a thumbs up until next week i'm dino for cheaper jeeper tv be well stay safe take care <laughs>